All right. Welcome, Door Grow Hackers, to the Door Grow Show. If you are a property management entrepreneur that wants to add doors, make a difference, increase revenue, help others, impact lives, and you're interested in growing your business and life, and you are open to doing things a bit differently, then you are a Door Grow Hacker. Door Grow Hackers love the opportunities, daily variety, unique challenges, and freedom that property management brings. Many in real estate think you're crazy for doing it. You think they're crazy for not because you realize that property management is the ultimate high trust gateway to real estate deals, relationships, and residual income. At DoorGrow, we are on a mission to transform property management businesses and the business owners. We want to transform the industry, eliminate the BS, build awareness, change perception, expand the market, and help the best property management entrepreneurs win. I'm your host, property management growth expert, Jason Hull, the founder and CEO of DoorGrow. Now, let's get into the show. And today's guest is Alex. Alex Jarbo, am I saying your last name right? Yep. I did? Okay. Yep. All right. <laughs> I don't know if it was like a soft H sounding J yeah. or something. <laughs> so Alex, welcome to the show. So Alex, you have a company called Sargon Investments. You do a lot of cool Airbnb stuff. So I'm really excited to have you on as a guest. Uh, I think the Airbnb market is of interest to a lot of my clients and a lot of property managers. It's heating up. There's more interest growing. Um, and so you know, maybe to get started, tell us a little bit about your background and how you kind of got into dealing with rental properties. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I was originally, I, I served about four and a half years in the Marine Corps. And then um, I had gotten to a point where I sort of just wanted to branch out and sort of do my own thing um, outside of the military. So got out. Um, and then the the day I got out of the military, I'd actually moved down to where I live here in Asheville. Um, prior to that, I like spent a couple months in trying to figure out like, where I wanted to move. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, um, and I, I wanted to get into short-term rentals. Um, that was sort of the niche that I had chosen inside real estate. So when I moved here, got my real estate license, helped some people purchase uh, and sell properties. But I saw, I mean, I saw a lot of people um, purchasing short-term rentals um, that, that would just come to me. And so I decided to purchase my first one, or at least start to purchase my first one. And uh, I originally wanted to use my VA loan um, and purchase like a duplex or a triplex, live in one and rent the other couple out um, on Airbnb. But what I realized really quickly um, was that like it was it was just very difficult even back then to back in 2017 to find uh, good cash flowing short term rentals um, that weren't completely out of my budget at the time. Um, so after maybe like three months of looking at getting outbidded a lot, uh, we, uh, I decided to build my first short-term rental. Um, and on top of uh, building, I decided to, to take over the, uh, the management. So we, that's where I decided to both start a development company and start a management company. And um, that, that one property turned into two, turned two turned into four that we're developing. And now we're developing 10 and then working on like a boutique resort. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's sort of the, the short of, of where where I'm at now is just uh, focusing on putting together these like boutique resort developments, and then we we, we self manage in house. Awesome. So, a lot of property managers lis listening might think, you know, I, I would like to be an investor and maybe get some of my own. I know some of my clients dabble a little bit just in their own investments, even if they manage long term rentals, they want to get more into their Airbnb. So, let, why don't we approach that? topic first, like getting into it, you do some things that are a little bit different than the typical Airbnb investor. And one of which being cabins. So I'm really curious about this idea of why cabins. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, so it, this is prior to COVID. My, my whole idea was like people, we, we, right now we invest in mountain communities, but every, every market mm. has their own little area. Where any anytime I talk to someone, they're like, I don't know where to start investing. I was like, just start in your backyard. Your backyard, if if you live in a metro area, like a lot of a lot of areas, you're going to be renting out, like say condos, or you're going to be renting out um, apartments or something, just because it's you're in a busy metro city. I like to ask them like, where where in your city or like the market that you live in, where where do you, people like to vac take weekend vacations? Maybe an hour to two away from you, um, driving wise. And that's sort of the market that that I recommend people sort of go into is people 
people are fine with driving, say, like 15, 20 minutes away from like a metro city up to an hour in, in some cases. So like mm. a good example of that is like people in New York, New York, like New York City are, are going to travel maybe two hours. They're used to traveling two hours north uh, to say like the Catskills to, to vacation. Same thing with, uh, say, like in California on the West Coast, people in San Diego are pretty used to going up to Big Bear Lake um, and dri- taking that drive. Um, land prices are going to be cheaper, um, but you, you can also host um, some like, say, not, not parties, but like bigger, bigger, you can host more people on, in some of these larger cabins and you have more control on the design. And that's sort of that's sort of the thing we really focus on is focusing on developing unique cabins, whether it be a frames, really nice log cabins. Um, we're, we're dabbling in like tree houses. It's just difficult to find like financing on those right now. But uh, mm. just uh, I, the reason we gravitated towards cabins over same, so, say something like purchasing a condo in a metro city is is we have more control over the design, which which just plays into the marketing of it, it's easier to rent out these unique properties um, compared to say like something like a, a normal condo or something where it's a little bit more difficult to differentiate yourself to, to like the condo next door or something. So, I mean, so it sounds like some of the key things you look at is proximity, like pick an area that's that's nearby. It needs to be something kind of, you know, where people take a vacations and then novelty seems to be an aspect to this. Like cabins right. are a novel thing, you know, in the mountain area and making it somehow unique or different or stand out. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like the, what, what I always like to say is you, you want... If you if you say if you're not developing the property and you're coming into it, you want something unique about the property that I, I like the property to be an experience in itself on top of the city that the people are visiting for the attraction. So like if you if you um, if you're looking at a market that that has its attractions, but at the same time, it's like you sort of get rid of the seasonality part of it a little bit when the property itself is an experience in itself. Mm, yeah, good point. The property kind of needs to be its own event or its own right. thing. Yeah. Cool. So let's, let's shift gears and talk about, um, you know, property managers that might want to get into this game of targeting people that like you have a portfolio or a small portfolio of investments that they can maybe get on as clients and what that might look like. And then maybe, uh, you know, one of the things I think you're really good at is the technology. And so we could chat maybe a little bit about that. Yeah, for for managers who are looking, say, like we were talking about before this, we were talking about like uh, a a lot of long term managers are uh, sort of starting to dabble in the short term rental game. Um, Mm. It's it's it sounds intimidating, but it's not as intimidating as it as it sounds because it's there's a lot of technology out there right now, uh, plugins and then also CRMs that that make the the process pretty uh, seamless. Um, Depending on how many properties you have in the portfolio, it's it's pretty, you really don't need boots on the ground. Um, It it might, uh, in terms of like having a property manager in an area, again, I would focus on one market at a time. um, But you can get away with a part time maintenance person Uh, the the most important part is probably going to be your cleaning crew. Um, And that's that's going to be up to you. There's pros and cons to either um, hiring your own like managing the cleaning cleaning in house or um, teaming up with a local cleaning crew in the area that can handle the, the cleaning stuff, which again, the cleaning is, is definitely the, like where the, the clean, I look at my cleaning crew as almost the manager of the, the prop, the, the properties themselves, because they're, 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 mm. they're there at least twice a week um, or at least once a week, depending on what the booking looks like. So they see what needs to be replaced, what's damaged. If anything is damaged, they send me a picture directly, which I send directly to, to either Airbnb, VRBO, wherever, wherever the property is listed. Um, so the technology piece is going to be huge. Um, and it, again, it's all dependent on how, how big you are. If you have 10 cabins, you can probably get a, get away with, there are messaging plugins where it's like, I would say 80% of your messaging is automated. And then you can hire virtual assistants to sort of take, take, uh, over the other 20% of the messaging where it's like specific questions that are asked or say if they're, they're calling or something. So the cleaning crew is almost your inspection crew, like they're doing somewhat of an inspection as well, not just coming in and cleaning. So they're identifying issues, submitting things to your maintenance team or your system for maintenance. And then you need people that are managing that, you know, 
And then you've got uh, VAs that can help facilitate some of these things happening, right? Right. Now, what are some of the actual technological tools that you utilize that help you to systemize the business and make things simple for yourself? The first one is, uh, and I'll talk about maybe four or five tools here. The first one's cool. going to be a company. Uh, uh, um, uh, it's a tool and a company called StayFi. And I've talked about this tool so much now and I've recommended it to anyone looking to get into short-term rentals. StayFi is essentially a little disc that plugs in the back of the router. And what that does is it email captures any guest that's using your internet. That one protects you um, from if the guest is doing anything illegal on your internet, which might happen. But second, it, it emails, it captures everyone's email in the cabin. So um, it's a, it's, you're essentially taking digital marketing principles and applying it to brick and mortar business, which is the, the short term rental stuff, um, which is a little mm -hmm. difficult to do. But it, if, if you can master that part, um, it's like you, you, you can essentially capture your customers. So stay five. Imagine like you're walking into a Starbucks, you walk into an airport and you have to enter in your email address to be able to get access to the Wi-Fi. It's the same idea here, but it's geared towards short term rentals. So from there, we capture their email. Um, we use MailChimp to push out uh, marketing emails, but we push out maybe seasonal emails, like three or four emails a year, just saying, hey, like this season's coming up or Valentine's Day is coming up. Would you like to book with us? Originally, or uh, when you're starting off, you can just put your Airbnb link directly in there. But as a manager who who wants to build a bigger short term rental business, you, you can you can use this to, to sort of take people off of Airbnb VRBO where they book initially with uh, the short term rental sites. But then you can build a platform on the back end um, to sort of capture direct bookings where you're not paying both the both the guest is not paying the the processing fees. And then same thing with the host. You're, you're saving money on that end um, where you're right. sort of you're you have more control over the guests, which is which is what we realize is very important. Yeah. So you're shifting from just traffic that's fed to you by Airbnb and you're taking that traffic so that it doesn't always have to come back through that and creating it's your own traffic. It's traffic Absolutely. you own now. You're building you a list. Their email. You're building a list with with the short term rentals. What um, and for those that emails that you capture, do you have any like even anecdotal data or information on how many rebook at the same property? Is that common? It is, it is pretty common. I don't have exact numbers on that, um, but we we do see a boost in booking, say like a couple days after um, we push the 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 email out. Um, right now, we're still working on uh, building out the back end platform. Uh, we're just pushing them directly uh, back through Airbnb right now. But um, Air, like uh, companies like Airbnb and VRBO have metrics that that show. Like, hey, this person has rebooked with you this many times. Uh, and then people who are looking to get into more of an advanced system, uh, stream, uh, we use Streamline or we're going to be using Streamline. Uh, Streamline vacation rental software is, is top of the line um, where you, you can syndicate all the like syndicate to the top uh, short term rental sites. And then it sort of syndicates all the messaging, too, that comes from the different sites. So you have one platform which I'd really recommend doing. Like if, if, if someone is coming up to a manager and saying, Hey, I want to take over your property. Um, what can you do for me? The first thing I recommend is always, are they just on one platform? If they're just on Airbnb, if they're just on VRBO that you can already, there, there's already, um, there's already room for growth there by the, just putting it on a couple other platforms. You're putting more eyes on your property. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very cool. So, Streamline for syndication is one of the things you mentioned. You mentioned MailChimp for getting emails out period periodically to your list or some sort of newsletter. Um, what other tools are you using to kind of simplify the business? Right now, uh, a digital guidebook is very effective. We like to essentially plan. Uh, and I, I sort of stole this idea from uh, my wife and I had uh, vacation in, uh, in Tulum Beach uh, on a resort. And mm -hmm. when we arrived, uh, the... Uh, the resort had practically planned our trip for us where it's like hey if you want to do if you want to do a, a a cave diving trip this is this if you want to this is what your day would look like if you want to go visit the pyramids this is what your day is going to look like if you just want a chill day and just want to go visit restaurants this is what your day could look like so we did the same thing there where we planned maybe three to four days like here where we have a um 
We have like over a hundred breweries in the city. So we do like a brewery day. We do a hiking day. We do a waterfall chasing day. And it's like um, all that's in the digital guidebook where um, you could put links to different things in the digital guidebook. And it, it's just sent out. The link is sent out with the check-in instructions. Same thing with uh, you can get with local restaurants or local providers and be like, hey, can you give me like a 10% discount? And then I'll put it in my digital guidebook <laughs> where the guests can use like almost like a QR code where you can just generate a QR code um yeah so for the digital guidebook is this just like a google document or is this like right. we use a company called hostfully and hostfully is specifically um a short-term rental digital guidebook host fully yeah host fully um host and then okay. f-u-l-l-y uh, yeah okay cool. pretty cheap too man it's like i think it's like 15 20 a month per property got it and so what advantage does hostfully give you over just throwing it in a google document for example, just uh, the templates are super easy to use. Uh, you can also track like how many people are actually looking at it. Um, mm. I mean, Google, Google, the, the I would say the templates, the templates. And then also hostfully does have a back end system, um, just like streamline. So like streamline, I believe it's a minimum of 15 properties. If you're just starting off, um, hostfully, I believe is like $25 a month, uh, per property, um, where it's the same type of syndication, uh, CRM where it pushes out to the, the other short-term rental sites. So you can sort of sync those two together. Got it. Yeah. I had a, um, I had a software company on one of my previous episodes. They were showcasing, um, trip angle, trip And, uh, he was talking about all, how they like reduce all the fees connected to Airbnb and all this stuff. So pretty cool. It might be worth uh, listeners checking out that, um, and uh, checking out tripankle.com. I think he had mentioned something about Streamline the last time I talked to this gentleman too. So um, some Streamline is sort of that. a company standard. Um, it's been around before Airbnb and when before VRBO like blew up too. People forget like like short-term rentals is not a new idea. It's just the, the access to be able to like Airbnb has made it so much easier um, and VRBO too. Like, short-term rentals have been around for a very long time where people had to pick up a phone and book. Um, so like, I mean, do you, right. people aren't missing the boat on like people think I've I talked to a couple people a week. There's like, is it too late to invest in short term rentals? Like, no, it's, it's not, um, invest and manage both. Um, it's, it's a continuing to grow, especially with COVID, like people sort of stepped away from hotels a little bit and they're more comfortable driving out a little further out where it's like, if, would you rather pay an extra fifty hundred dollars to stay in an actual house compared to a hotel? And, um, and same thing with like some of the larger properties that we manage. Um, uh, it's like we, we, we have families instead of booking maybe two or three hotel rooms, they're, they're just going to book one house and it almost comes out to be the same price. Per nice. Night. Yeah. Yeah. For, for large groups, it's, it's hard to beat. You know, if you're doing a family reunion or something like that, it's pretty difficult. Right. You're, right. you're talking a whole bunch of hotel rooms or you get a 10 bedroom house. Right. So and one thing, one thing uh, you going back to the tools that just came to mind. Um, mm -hmm. This has helped us a lot when it comes to because um, we are in a very strict short term rental market in terms of like laws and zoning and everything. Um, yeah. And uh, one of the things that's helped us a lot, and this this can help a lot of the managers who are looking to get into the space is uh, using a company called Noise Aware and stacking that with a company called uh, Party Squasher. And uh, we mainly use Noise Aware over, um, compared to uh, Party Squasher, you can combine the two, but Noise Aware sort of, um, it, it looks, uh, it hears, it doesn't listen to everything that, it doesn't listen into conversations, but it monitors the decibel level inside of the property. So if the guests are being way too loud or screaming, um, they, they'll get a, the, though, since, since you get their phone number and booking, they'll get an, an even if it's through Airbnb or, or VRBO, they get an immediate text message like, Hey, you're being too loud. Could you please like quiet down or something like this? So, so maybe a little bit more tactful than that, but, um, that yeah. that's, that's been a very powerful tool for us is, um, and especially approaching the County. It's like the, the biggest thing neighbors think about is like, Oh my God, when they think Airbnb, they are like American. You think like, oh my God, there's gonna be just parties next door all all the right. time. So, so that, that, that's right. Destroy the neighborhood. Right. So neighborhood. yeah. So um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. So if they get a text message, 
do do they reply to this and do you see their messages or like what the hell you know you, you, like, you this can is crazy see that, but uh wh what we do we there's like a, a whole list of things so stay fi what i mentioned earlier also allows you to see how many devices are connected to yeah. to the wi-fi so right so if there's like a thousand you know there's yeah, some so, rage I mean, going on granted you might have your laptop like one guest will have a phone a laptop so two three devices maybe an ipad to a, a tablet um, yeah. but if like uh, the property sleeps six people and there's 30 people attached to the Wi-Fi, uh, we, uh, <laughs> we, we, we also have like an outdoor facing camera just at the, at the driveway too. So say if we do get, um, say, cause we, we can set it up to where we get the no noise notification as well. So from there, we, we just look at our cameras and say, oh, okay, there's 50 cars in the parking lot and this place sleeps six people. Um, and then from there we sort of, um, we can either text, hey, like you're not supposed to have, or we can re reach reach out to Airbnb directly. We've never really dealt with that issue, but it's the the systems are in place um, just to make sure that just to keep the As a fail the, safe. Yeah, yeah, the fail safe. So you and it's largely probably the screening process at the outset that you have in place that prevents that, right? So you mentioned noise aware. You couple it sometimes with party squasher. Is that what you said? Yeah, or? and I haven't. I personally hasn't haven't used it, but uh, some other guests have recommended to me. I haven't. I'm, I have almost no experience in that, but I've seen it a lot mentioned on uh, different short term rental podcasts and some of the books that I've read too. Okay. Cool. I don't know what it does on the back end, but I, <laughs> yeah. I've, I, like, well, yeah, I don't either. <laughs> okay, cool. So, but it probably prevents parties, which is probably a big concern. Like, so par parties happening, the noise wear and the party squasher. All right, cool. Any other tools or systems that you utilize in managing your rentals to make sure things go smoothly? Um, going back to uh, the the cleaning crew, um, just a good line of communication is very important. Um, making sure that you are choosing a cleaning crew or a cleaning company that can grow with you. Um, a lot of the time, if you don't want to be teaching um, your cleaning crew how to clean short term rentals, because when I what I realized yeah. initially, and um, just with the labor shortage that's happening right now, is um, a lot of people like my cleaning crew stop taking on new clients, not new properties, just new clients. Um, it's, it's difficult to sort of try to switch the mindset of like approaching a cleaner that does takes care of properties, say like, um, for, for just cleaning people's properties. Um, like our, our, our property manager or our, our cleaning crew specifically deals in short term rentals, a company that mm -hmm. is used to turning a property two, three times a week, um, if need be. Um, another thing um, I'd recommend is it might it might affect your bottom line a little bit, but it, it, it might outweigh the the amount of time that you put on a specific property is because of COVID, uh, we, we stopped taking on one day bookings, which we were taking a lot of one day bookings prior to COVID. And um, that sort of just came out of my cleaning crew couldn't handle the workload um, from the one day bookings. But what I realized is looking back, we've been doing that for four or five months now we've stopped taking one day bookings is, um, a lot of our problems were a lot of our problems, a lot of our questions, a lot of our bandwidth was taken up by one day guests. And I sort of understand it's like a, a lot of the times they were just coming in at like say eight, nine, 10 PM and they have to check in at 10 AM the next day. They don't really get mm -hmm. to enjoy the property too much. Um, so you get those late night texts a lot too uh, from the one day guests compared to a guest who's staying three, four, five, sometimes a week with you. Sometimes those are the quietest guests where you don't, you don't, you don't hear anything from them. Maybe a couple questions here and there. But what I saw is a lot of my issues, a lot of my uh, people requesting refunds or whatever um, was coming from one day guests. So for people who are already in the short term rental space, I'd play around to see if maybe. Cause I mean, the one day guests were only, and what I also realized too, was like, sometimes that one day guest will book in the center of the week in the Wednesday, which blocks someone from booking that entire week. So if someone's in the short term rental space, play around with seeing, maybe just do it with one property and see, um, and see how the property is affected. You might, you might get a, a better tenant, uh, in there, uh, com which is what we saw a, a better tenant, uh, by booking two, three days. Uh, minimum compared to a one day. 
Um, and what, what I also saw with, um, if you're booking on Airbnb or VRBO, is the algorithm sort of adjusts based off of uh, that request of only accepting two or three day bookings. It'll try to, mm. it'll try to play with your schedule to, to, to show it to people who are only trying to book three days and sort of um, like for, for most of our properties are fully booked up with no one day gaps um, in, in the schedule right now after we've, we've switched over from not taking one day bookings. Yeah, that's interesting. I would imagine that that would be really effective. Plus, if you're able to get two and three day bookings to fill it up for the most part, you probably, rather than a bunch of one days, you're probably between a one day and a three day, for example, you probably have similar operational costs for right. the same. That but the and stay the less is different. Less wear and tear because your cleaning crew's coming in there. I mean, just constantly turning yeah. the property and everything. Um, yeah. Yeah, that that that's been huge, and that sort of just came that like we discovered that by accident. Also, one of my mentors had told me like we were operating at a, for the first year we were operating at like 100 percent occupancy, and he's like, "Your prices aren't high enough. You shouldn't be at 100 percent occupancy." And that that range true for any that, any type of real estate apps asset. It's like mm. if you're at 100 percent occupancy or 100 100 percent book. Yeah, you haven't hit um, whether, the limit yet on what you could get. <laughs> right. If you're at 100 percent multifamily self storage, whatever. It's like if you're at 100 percent, you got to raise your prices. So, yeah. What's, what's the occupancy rate you go for now instead of aiming for a hundred percent? If we can, so we, we, we raised our rates by 30%. If we can stick to the 85%, which is, I mean, if you look at like companies are, uh, uh, that, that look at, uh, like what to price your property as like air DNA.co is a, probably another good, uh, a good mm -hmm. tool for the audience. Um, that sort of helps you price out what the short-term rental will rent for, airdna.co. Um, they, they sort of look at uh, if a property is anything over 75%, that that's looked at like you're you're in a higher percentile compared to anything below that. Um, okay. When we, this is getting on the development side, when, when we develop our properties, we, we underwrite them as long-term rentals. Um, just in case, like if the, if the zoning ever changed in the city, that it's an extra fail safe, it's an exit, uh, like if, if that's worst, worst, worst case scenario. So if we have to book it out as a long-term rental, it can cover the debt service and the expenses if we needed to. Mm, smart. Yeah. Yeah. I know when, uh, COVID hit the short-term rental game got pretty damaged in the short term, right? Like that was, and there was a lot of people like trying to shift and shuffle yeah. and get their properties into the long-term space. Yeah. Um, what but, I, what I saw you know, too is, um, I had talked to someone, um, I realized that there's different, we use the term vacation rental and short term rental, um, pretty interchangeably, but sometimes people yeah. look at that as differently. Uh, vacation, mm -hmm. if, if you look at it, if you look at the definitions of what I'm about to explain right now, vacation rentals is what I'm in right now. Sometimes short uh, short term rentals can be looked at like 30 day plus stays, but not over yeah. six months. Um, and what I saw is an, another way kind to, of extended stay, sort of. Yeah, short -term. during during COVID, a lot of people were renting out to traveling nurses, and they're still doing that. Is um, mm. they're they're renting out to traveling nurses. May, say you're not in a market where you have all these properties, mate, you might be close to a very large hospital. If you're close to a large hospital, you can go, there are short-term rental sites that are specifically geared towards um, nurses. And uh, that's a lot of hosts sort of pivoted towards that during when they weren't allowed to do short-term rentals. Um, but the, the, the 30 day plus stay is sort of a gray area is um, almost all cities and counties cannot regulate um, short-term rentals for 30 days plus, um, which, which is interesting. Uh, a lot of people are mm, make, making yeah. good money just, just on that route. So. Yeah. Um, I've, I've talked to some, uh, property managers. One property manager mentioned that they, they do a lot of that extended stay. It's in the short-term sort of space, but they get a lot of people from overseas that are coming over that need a place to stay in the interim or they're coming for some sort of work thing. You know, they might be, you know, maybe from India coming to work for a tech firm or some of these things and they need an extended place to stay for a few months while they're doing some sort of training, you know, things like that. And so, yeah, that can be a very profitable business. They're getting a lot more money than the standard rate 
on a property. Yeah. So And you you had mentioned COVID. It would be interesting to I've seen different projections on like once international travel really starts to pick pick up again, like not uh, prices or occupancy might drop, but it's going to be interesting to see every market's going to be different how that plays out because a lot of people did start using start. They picked up Airbnb and VRBO during COVID where it's like instead of staying in a hotel, they decided to book through Airbnb and VRBO for the first time. So it'll be interesting to see if those people, if the occupancy and the, the rates sort of stay the same once international travel picks back up. Mm, yeah, that will be interesting. Well, cool. This has been really insightful. And I'm sure those that are kind of dabbling or just getting into the short term rail game will have picked up some cool ideas and some cool tips. Anything else that uh, you think they might be interested in or that we could point out to property managers? Yeah, um, I talk a lot about this stuff on my YouTube channel too. Uh, Alex builds it's a little logo of a blue tree house. Um, if, if they want to sort of dive deeper into uh the management side of it and the tool side um they can they can check that out um and then also my my website sargoninvestments.com sort of uh they, they they can if they can't find the youtube channel they can find it through there too awesome cool yeah, yeah. alex appreciate you coming on the show and um me, and th thanks for sharing some of your knowledge and insights and i wish you continued success in your short-term game perfect thanks jason you bet all right, cool. So uh, check check him out on YouTube. He's got a cool little YouTube channel, uh, it, you know, going over investments, short term rentals. He talks about some cool ideas, lending, loans, like how to play the game of short term rentals. So check him out on YouTube. And um, for those that are interested in growing their property management business, be sure to check us out at doorgrow.com. We're here to support you and your growth. We're especially really good at helping you not just add a bunch of doors without spending a bunch of money on marketing. And we are helping, we have short-term rental clients, you know, in our program and long-term rental clients are our most common target audience that we're helping build out their portfolio. But we also are helping on the operational side to be able to streamline the business and to become the entrepreneur that can run and have a team that makes your life easier so that you have more freedom, more fulfillment, more contribution, which means you're making a difference and doing things you really feel good about and more support. And so if you feel like you're kind of scarce on those things, I call those the four reasons, and you're really frustrated and you're really banging your head against the wall with your team, then reach out. We can support you and help you in that. You might be a really good candidate for our door grow and scale mastermind, which is really awesome. So Anyway, check us out. And for those that are listening to this on iTunes or on YouTube, uh, be sure to also join our free Facebook community, which you can get to by going to doorgrowclub.com. And until next time, to our mutual growth. Bye, everyone.